You are standing in the car park on Grattan Street. Go to the back of the car park so that you can look out over all the cars and see the road. There's a little laneway behind you. Stand right at the start of it. You should be able to see flats in front of you, squares of various brown with windows and white stripes going down it. To your right is a brown and beige building, modern. To your left, a dirty blue wall, graffitied. Directly beside you, to the left, is a concrete block with metal girders sticking out. Behind that, green railings. But this is not real. All of this is an illusion, designed to make your eyes skim over so that you won't linger, won't look. Would you like to understand what really happened here? Would you like to see the truth? Close your eyes. What can you hear? What are you hoping for? What are you afraid of? Open your eyes. Look over at the blue wall. Can you see the long glass window that runs the length of the horizontal section at the front of the car park? This is where a young man once lived, a harpist beyond compare. But he was terribly shy and didn't like to go outside. He sat on the top floor and composed beautiful melodies and was content to play them for himself. He didn't particularly need or want to share them with others. One day, however, he left the window open and his music could be heard across the valley where you now stand. There was a wicked witch passing through, a Medusa, and she stopped in her tracks when she heard this music. She stood under the young man's window, totally enraptured by her song. So powerful was the music that Medusa knew she could never leave. Her heart would break if she had to be away from those beautiful melodies. But she was not capable of real appreciation or love, for she wanted to own the music. But no one can own sound. And so she withered and grew weak. She stayed under the window so long that she simply faded away. You can still see an impression on the wall. A soul, no matter to whom it belonged, always leaves a mark. Now Medusa had not been on her way through the valley for nothing. She had made a pact with the giant that she would turn it into stone. The giant, feared by many, had grown weary of people screaming and running away all the time. All that noise interfered with its thinking, which it took very seriously. It was trying to figure out the true nature of life why things are the way they are, and as such the giant realised that terrifying people was indeed its true purpose and nature. But that didn't mean it wasn't an awful lot of work to do. So the giant asked Medusa to turn it to stone, so that it could still fulfil its nature by being imposing and scary, but it wouldn't have to worry about the daily organisation of terror. It would have leave to sit and think, until the weather had rubbed it all away. However, Medusa, trapped by the young man's song, never went to the giant, and so the giant came to her. When it did, Medusa was centimetres away from inexistence. Her outline was very blurry, but she was just present enough to stare into the giant's eyes and turn it to stone. Solidifying and still looking at Medusa, it sat down next to the lush green forest, what you now see as metal railings. The young man, unaware of all of this, continued to make his music. But other people were very much aware of what had transpired. Fear of the giant had kept warring nations apart for years. But now that it had been turned into a living mountain, they went to war, slaughtering each other in the thousands. What they were fighting for has been forgotten. The king in his castle behind the forest the queen in her fortress of yellow and beige. They met on the plains and tried to prove that they were better than each other through the blood of innocent men. If you walk a little way down the alley, you can peek in and see the battleground. It's a wasteland now. Nothing to commemorate or mark what happened. The lives lost. Now there is only death. Look through the chinks in the wall. Listen hard. You can still hear the faint echoes of screams. The young man, 
safe, high up in his tower, but now completely alone, watched all of this come to pass. He thought about history and fate, and his role in the turning of time. He thought about these things for many years and eventually his harp strings stilled. If he had been more generous with his music, or had he not played at all, would Medusa and the giant never have come here? Would the war not have ravaged the valley? He began to believe that he had caused it, and the grief was too great for him to bear. So one day he put aside his instrument and walked to the balcony. He looked out over the valley that had once been full of life, a valley he had never really cared about, wrapped up as he was in his songs. But the valley to which he had affected death by his inaction. He sincerely believed this to be true, and having watched time pass, seen all traces of the bold giant fade away to a few stumpy teeth, listened to the battle cries of the men of arms stilled, wondered at Medusa's once powerful glare, now a distant gaze, he felt ineffectual, gnawed upon, and he came down from his tower for the first time. He walked across the valley and continued walking, to where the world between the living and the dead separates. He stood at the entrance to the pass, where you stand now, and thought about all that he had seen but how little he had lived. He started walking, wanting a new adventure, a different kind of seeing. He understood how thin life can be and wanted to see the rest of the universe with different eyes, hear its music with different ears. He walked down the path, turn and watch him go. You can choose to follow, go through the gateway or simply observe as he did.